10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. If you have your Bible, just turn with me to this passage. If you have a pen or pencil in your hand, you can underline it. Sometimes when you take time to underline the scripture in your Bible, and sometimes after you go back to the same passage, it will help you, it will bless you. Because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is God himself is given to us. So it says in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You and I are not righteous. Yeah. We are sinful people. We cannot come to the level of God's righteousness and expectation because the Bible says God is holy. That is why the angels worship him saying what? Holy, holy, holy. Three times they say holy, holy, holy. It's because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are holy. All the way, God is holy. Hallelujah. And so we cannot come to that level of holiness with our good works. And so we come to the Lord Jesus and his blood wash all our sins away. And we become righteous because of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And that is why we are righteous. We are saints. Bible calls us saints. And we are holy people, holy unto the Lord, separated from the world. For what? So that we can tell of His goodness. And so this morning when we worship together, what we are doing is that we are just gratefully praising Him for what He has done in our life. He washed us and makes us righteous. And so this uh, proverb says, the righteous run to it and are safe. Because the tower, strong tower, is not going to fall because of an earthquake. How many of you know in Morocco there was an earthquake? It was 6.6 .6 earthquake in Morocco. Morocco is a country just on the top of Africa, just below Spain. It's a small little country there and it has some old nice buildings and a new city, you know, they have built. And there was a great big earthquake. More than 2,000 people died just like that because the buildings just fell. 2,000 people died. More than 2,000. As they dig, they will find more bodies. See, there are devastations that happen all around the world and life goes on. People think about it for a few days and they, they forget about it because something else comes along. But because of His grace, we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is because of His grace and mercy. That is why we have to praise Him and honor Him and worship Him. And so the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are saved. That is why we are Christians because His name is on us. Hallelujah. And when people see, let them see Jesus in everything that we do. Amen. So this morning I wanted to share with you what can you do as a believer, as a, as a Christian to please God. Because that is the most important thing. You know, Paul talks about it, you know, in a beautiful way. He says, you know, I wish you were all like me. I am not married. And uh, the person who get married, you know, the husband will think about time to how to please his wife. Or the wife will think about times to how to please the husband. And Paul says it is important that we have to learn to please God. Hallelujah. Please God. So we need to know what can we do to please God. Turn with me to Ephesians in your Bible. Turn with me to Ephesians. Chapter 5, Paul write this to the Ephesian church. Chapter 5, and look at verse 10. Here's a statement that Paul made for us to deal with this question. Let me read it for you. It says, Ephesians 5.10. Find out what pleases the Lord. Okay, if you read from verse 8 onwards, he is saying this in verse 10, but let me read from verse 8 onwards. It says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, 
For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So we have a duty to search and find the scripture. The scripture tells us very clearly there are things that pleases God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right? That's a matter that's settled. There are things that the word of God reveals that pleases to God. In the beginning, we have two guys, Cain and Abel. They both brought sacrifices to God. Cain brought the fruits that he harvested to the Lord. But Abel, he brought the fat portions to the Lord. And so God looked at these offerings and he accepted the offering of Cain because it pleased the Lord. He did not accept the offering of Cain because it did not please the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what pleasing to God is what we need to do. It is our duty to find out what pleases God. Praise the Lord. Think about it. How can we please God? The person who walks in the flesh will not please, please God. But the person who walks in the spirit will please God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans, Paul has written extensively about the importance of the work of the Spirit. Now, Romans 8 is an amazing passage. Right here in verse 8, Romans 8 verse 8 says, those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. So now we know what will not please God? Those who are walking in the flesh or sinful nature cannot please God. Praise the Lord. There are people who call themselves Christians and they still walk in the flesh. When they do that, it is not pleasing to God. Hallelujah. So what is the opposite to that? The opposite to that is whatever that whenever you are allowing the spirit of God and walking by the spirit, that is pleasing to God because you are not walking in the flesh and you are obeying God in the spirit. Walking in the spirit pleases God. So what is walking in the flesh? Okay, walking in the flesh is found in Galatians chapter 5. These are the things are the fruit of the flesh. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5 that very clearly tells us these are the things that the flesh, fleshly nature or sinful nature. Let me read from verse 19 onwards. It says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, and drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I, want, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is plain and simple, black and white right here, written by Paul so clearly that if you obey the sinful nature and live a life according to the sinful nature, you cannot please God. But if you walk in the spirit, then it pleases God. All through chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, you will find name after name after name of people who have believed in God, trusted in God, have faith in God, and did not just allow the earthly nature or sinful nature to dominate their life, even though they are just like human beings like us. Praise the Lord. Abel was just like us. Abraham was just like us. Moses was just like us. And all the saints in the scripture in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews are just like us as human beings. But they had something different than all the other people. What is that? That is they have faith. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. 
By faith, Abraham. Hallelujah. By faith, Moses. Hallelujah. We have list of people who have believed in God and trusted in God and walked according to the faith that the Spirit of God allowed them to. So that pleased God. Why it is important? Because Bible says in the same chapter, it is impossible to please God without faith. Amen. So what pleases God? The answer is number one, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means we have a responsibility to check our level of faith. We all have cars and all of our car has a battery. Praise the Lord. There are times when you continue to put the light on and let your car run, you know, not run. What happens is your battery will go down. I have seen people... They go to the mall and park their car and put the light and they forget about it and they go into their shopping spree and they go to store after store and buy all the things and they come back and the battery is what? Dead. dead. Right? They had a full battery, but it's dead. Why? Because all the light is just used up all the battery. That is the same way we have to keep on and keeping on in our faith. We have to rekindle our faith in the Lord. That means we have to keep on charging our faith. Praise the Lord. Very often we have to stay in the presence of the Lord and just make sure that the doubts are driven away and the worries are driven away except the faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. Allow the word of God to permeate into our life so that our faith can be recharged. Think about this way. Your faith can be recharged as you wait on God and study the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And it will increase your faith. And it will increase your faith in such a way your battery is down 10%. And it will go 50% and 60%, 70%. And there are times that you can be what? 100% in your faith, just trusting in God. There is one of the prophets, he said, even though there is no cattle in my pen, there is no fruit in my uh, you know, tree, no grapes in my vine, but yet I will rejoice in the Lord my God, he says. Why? Because his trust, his faith in God don't depend on anything they have or have not. Praise the Lord. All these things that you have can be taken away. In Hawaii, in Maui, there was a fire that just, just came and just burned. People could not even escape. Burned the whole town. Burn it down. One moment people had everything that they wanted. And the next moment everything is just burned into rubbish. They cannot make use of it anymore. Things are things. Praise the Lord. So we cannot depend on the things all around us. God gives and God can take it away. But our faith in Him is more important than anything else. Because without faith, it is impossible yes. to please God. Hallelujah. So you and I have a responsibility to kindle our faith, to charge our faith. No matter, don't look at people and make them as an example. Don't look at anybody. Look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Because He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is our example. We look at Him. We learn from Him. And we grow in our faith in Him. Because Jesus obeyed God the Father, there were two times God the Father himself shouted out and told everybody around him that this is my son. I am well pleased in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why, did, why did God the Father did that? God the Father did it when Jesus was obeying and coming into the water and was baptized by John the Baptist. When he was coming out of the water, the heaven opened and the, and the Spirit of God descended upon him. Not only descended upon him, but there was voice from heaven said, This is my son. I am well pleased in him because... Jesus was willing to obey, even though he was the son of God. He was willing to obey everything that God the Father had planned for him. Amen. And the next time when Jesus took 
you know, his disciples to the Mount of Transfiguration. And he was there with Peter, James, and John. And when they were there on the mountaintop, and suddenly a cloud enveloped them, and especially Jesus. They could not see Jesus for a moment, but then suddenly when the cloud cleared off, and they saw Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and they were all just bright in their clothing. And his clothes, Jesus' clothes was so white, and these Peter, James, and John had no idea what is happening. But even then, God the Father said, listen guys, this is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him I am well pleased. Why did God the Father said about Jesus is because Jesus is willing to connect with God. Connect with God the Father all the time. He spent all night in praying. He spent times alone by himself in solitary place. He will spend time in praying to the Father. And that pleases God the Father because all these things that Jesus did is to increase his connection with the Father. We have a responsibility. If you want to please God, we have to increase the level of faith. Don't be satisfied with the 70% of faith you got. Praise the Lord. Yes. And this is what the, happens in the world. You may have a 70% of faith, but because you are in the world, and the world's pressure is going to push you without you knowing it. Do you know what happens? If you have a dog in your home, the dog's hair is tend to stick on you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't want that, but it happens, right? If you have a dog, he's called Ben, and, and Ben has a lot of hair. He runs up and down and he just rubs on everything. And then I have a new shirt and a new pant on, and without me doing anything, all this hair, what? Comes and sticks. That is the same way when you are in the world, there are dogs all around us, praise the Lord, who are doing abominable things all around us and you hear things and you see things and, and you know it is affecting your faith. So what do you do? You go into your closet and increase your faith and you go and spend time in reading and studying the word of God. That is why very often as a pastor, I encourage you to be a student of the word of God because I know how hard it is without the word that you will die. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So increase faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what else will please God? I mean, there are so many things that the word of God says it's pleasing to God. Now, let me go further. Turn with me in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 says this. Let me read from verse 15 and 16. It says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Hallelujah. Yes. Here is another example of what you can do to please God. What you can do to please God is you can worship Him that pleases God. And also you have a willingness to share with others. Because when you share with others, it pleases God. Hallelujah. Because you have developed a compassion in your heart. And you see somebody who is in need and that compassion and love that you have for that person, it moves you to be sensitive to the needs of people and you are willing to share with others. Praise the Lord. So worshiping God is pleasing to him. And also when you share with others, it's pleasing to him. So what do we do? Number one, we have to increase our faith to please God. Number two, to worship him so that we can 
pray please God. Number three, we can share with others that he is going to please God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go a little further. So do you know, if you pray for your government leaders and who are in authorities, it's going to please God. How many of you know that? Do you know that? Because sometimes we think it is not my responsibility to pray for Biden. I don't like him, so I'm not going to pray for him. That's a bad attitude. I don't like the people in Congress. They are taking wrong decisions. So I'm not going to pray for them. That is a bad attitude. You have a responsibility to pray for your leaders, your people in authority, the governors. You have a responsibility to pray. Why? Because that pleases God. Amen. Wow. When you don't pray for your leadership, then it's not pleasing to God. So you and I have a responsibility, whether the person that is in the position, you like it or not, you have a responsibility to pray on your knees to the Lord. Hallelujah. The pastor, where is this? Show me so that I can look at it and believe. I like that. I'm glad you asked. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to 1 Timothy. Paul's letter to Timothy, first letter, chapter 2. And look at verse 3. <clears throat> Let me read from verse 1 onwards, okay? Verse 1 onwards. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Are you all with me? Yep. Praise the Lord. I hope you are taking down all these Bible verses so that you can have it in your heart. What pleases God? Let me read it for you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I urge then, first of all, that all the requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Look at verse 3. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Look at here in this verse. Paul is writing to young Timothy. He was the pastor who was going to be pastoring in Ephesus. So when he is going to be the pastor in Ephesus church, Paul the apostle is writing to him. He is saying that I urge you, Timothy, I want you to pray seriously. Prayers, intercession, and supplication be made to all people. You have a responsibility to not only pray for your own wife and your husband and your children and your grandchildren, but you also have a responsibility to pray for your neighbors. You pray for your the community people. You pray for this country, especially, he says, you pray for the kings and all those who are in authority. Why? Because that is good and it pleases God. Wow. See, sometimes we think it's not my responsibility to pray. But you know what? If you want to do something to please God, you start praying. Hallelujah. Start praying for everyone around you, especially for the ones who are in authority. How many of you take time to pray for your authorities? Be truthful to me, okay? Think about it, guys. It's important. It is important that we need to take time to pray. Why do we have to pray? So that we can live a peaceful life. How many of you know the decisions that they are taking in Washington, D.C.? It's going to affect the whole country, right? It is going to affect the whole country. Everyone is going to be affected by every decision that the authorities are taking. Even though there are more laws can be added after one after the other. But yet, thank God that we have a Congress. Hallelujah. Thank God we have a senators. Thank God that we have an executive department. Thank God we have a judicial department. Hallelujah. Think about it. When that all is taken away, think about what happens. 
When the law is not abided by people, it is called lawlessness. So we have to thank God that God has placed people in positions of authorities. And we have a responsibility to pray for them. Bible says, because that is good and it pleases our God. Praise the Lord. So increase your faith. Charge them. Increase your worship. Increase your time of worshiping the Lord. Increase the time that you spend in loving people and sharing with others. And increase here, we see that your prayer for the people in authority. I know it is hard to watch news these days, right? I don't like to watch CNN or Fox News or all the numbers. <laughs> letters of this news because they say a news and then they talk about it and talk about it and they give their opinion on it which I don't like it at all just tell me what is happening and that's it right hush but they don't just keep on talking so we don't like to watch it but you know what we have a responsibility to watch what is going on so that we can pray Jesus the last he said watch and pray it is important that you have to pray watch what is going on so that you have a compassion and a, and a you know love for people so that you can pray for people that is going to please god please Hallelujah. the lord it's going to please god i want you to please god i want you to please god if you do continually things that pleases god Think about what blessings that he will pour upon you. Wow. Praise the Lord. What kind of a blessing that he will pour upon you because you are pleasing to God. You are doing things that pleases his heart and he will accept your offering. He will accept. So when God accepts your gift and he will give more abundantly in our life. That is what we call abiding in him which means we give him and he gives us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We depend on him. We rely on him so that we can continually flourish in our day-to-day -day life. We don't walk according to the flesh. But walk in the spirit. We can please God. If you increase your faith, it pleases God. If you increase your worship, it pleases God. If you're willing to share with others, it pleases God. I want you to live a life that is pleasing to God. Because the time is going to come. People are going to turn. They don't want to hear the right preaching. They want to hear what their itching ears want to hear. And they will try to change the word of God and try to preach according to what the people want. I'm telling you, i rather please God than anybody else. Hallelujah. Pleasing God is more important for me than anything else. I really don't care because my name is written in the book of life. Is your name in the book of life? Because my name is in the book of life. And that is what the most important thing. And you have a responsibility to live a life that is pleasing to God. I'm done. Praise the Lord. I'm done. If you don't get anything this morning, I pray that the Spirit of God will kindle your heart in such a way that you will do, do things that pleases God. Don't walk according to the flesh. Amen. Don't obey the sinful nature. The sinful nature is going to be there until we die. How many of you know that? You're going to have flesh all through your life. Your flesh is going to fight against you and your spirit. And so what do you have to do? Just get strong in your spirit so that you can keep the flesh under control. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Keep the flesh under control because the fleshly things, the sinful nature is not going to please God. But whatever pleases God is the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and finally what? Self-control. 
when you bear this fruit, what happens is you will be strong in the Lord, pleasing to God. I pray God will give you that wisdom in these last days to stay focused on Him. Let nothing move you, Bible says. Stand your ground. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you this morning. If you have a special prayer need, you know, you can just reach out your hand and I will come and pray for you. But I want to pray for each and every one of you. That God